So the next topic I wanted to go over um, was low interest rates. So just to give us some contrast, um, 10 years ago, slightly over 10 years ago, in June of 2005, U.S. Treasury bonds, so they're guaranteed by the U.S. government, considered the most you know, safe and, and lowest risk. Um, so those that were, um, they, and they mature an average between 11 and 30 years. The average rate of return for bonds issued in June of 2005 was 7.94%. So fast forward that 10 and a half years later. So, oh, and and just to clarify that, so on a million dollars, if you had a million dollars invested, you would get $78,940 per year with virtually no risk for, say, the next 20 years. That's back in June of 2005. So let's contrast that with where we are now, December 2015. And this is after the Fed raised the rates um, a couple weeks ago. So U.S. Treasury bonds average between 11 and 30 years is 2.73%. On $1 million investment, that would earn $27,300 per year with no risk for the next 20 years. So that's close to a third of what a similar investment paid a little over 10 years ago. Um, And then we have the increase in the consumer price index from 2005 to 2015. Um, It went up 20%. So when we're looking at what we're faced with, we're depending on our investments to um, give us income in retirement. The interest rates are, are about a third of what they were 10 years ago, and prices have gone up about 20%. So it's a very challenging environment, Um, and this is what low interest rates are doing. I mean, they're really forcing people to look into, you know, more take take on more risk and so forth to be able to um, and to put up with more volatility to be able to earn that money that they need to, so they can have a successful retirement plan. Um, So pension plans. Um, So there are still pension plans around, um, and they they do use an assumed risk-free rate of return, like an interest rate of 7%. They're still using that, and and they're calculating how much money companies or governments or unions need to um, contribute to the plan to make them work for the the participants. So if I assumed I would make 7% of my investments um, and, you know, and, and I'm an employer, well, it keeps my contribution level down. I don't have to put in as much. So if we change the assumed rate of return to 3%, which is closer to what they are now, that gap between those, that is what's causing so much um, uh, problems in the pension world and causing pension plans to be underfunded. This is why so many employers have opted for cash balance plans um, that are not dependent on the plan's investment earnings um, to pay out a fixed amount over someone's life. Instead, the trend, and this is this will continue, um, and the employer agrees to put X percentage of money into the plan, then whatever you have when it's time for you to retire, you need to make it work. And that's what we're seeing increasingly. And we're going to see more of that because um, there's just no way that companies can afford to fund, fully fund their pensions if they were to lower the assumed rate of return closer to what, what it actually is right now. And what this means then in this low interest rate environment and everywhere I read, it's pretty much a consensus that we're going to be in this low interest rate environment for a long time. So it's really seen as more of a secular trend, which is a long trend, you know, a 20-year trend. Um, It means that people in general should wait longer to retire, should save more, you know, not count on investments to be able to, especially low-risk investments, to be able to provide them with the earnings they need, um, and then also to spend less. Uh, so those are, um, you know, those are uh, good things to do um, in this low interest rate environment.